wet outside. <laughs> and uh, then we were praying before the service, and, and Justin was hearing about digging deeper wells this morning. So there's a whole water theme get going on. It was a powerful time praying for the service, so we're just going to keep it going. Okay, so welcome everybody who's joining live stream. Um, really, like, feel like we're going even deeper. This isn't like now we just get to sit back and, you know, watch. We're actually going to keep going deeper <laughs> as we keep going this morning. I, I really just, like, the last couple of weeks, you know, um, Steve talked about hunger, and Andrew talked about, you know, for such a time as this, like, God has so much for us right here, right now, and what we're called to. And so today is really just continuing on, just moving into those places. I really just wanted to start by just again, like, we have permission to be hungry, like, there's always more of God to know. Isn't that awesome? Like, he's so amazing. There's always more to him to know. And I had a dream one time, and in this dream, I was at this big banquet table, and they were serving food. And so I ate my food, and I was still hungry after I ate my food. I really wanted more food. And I looked around. It was like <clears throat> nobody else was getting more food. And it was like it was a thing, like it really wasn't appropriate to ask for more food. And yet I was like, but I really want more food. And, um, and the Lord just was talking to me from that dream, like, actually, you really do need more food. And like, don't just give in to that thing around you of like, no, really, like, don't, you don't really need more, you know, like, it's not really appropriate but actually go for the more. And I feel like, you know, we're in this place, like as a church, we're in this place of going after more. And like we've, we've been here for 31 years. We've been going after more all this time. <laughs> and you're like, we're still going after more? But yeah, we really are <laughs> because there actually is more. And if you read in the word, God's always telling us that. He's always telling us that there's actually more. And so there is actually more. So you have permission to be hungry and eat more, okay? All right. So we're going to start um, actually in Ephesians. So I would really love it if you have a Bible with you. Get a Bible if you're at home watching. Open it to Ephesians. It's really awesome. If you don't have these scriptures underlined, if you underline in your Bible, I would highly encourage you to underline these scriptures. It's like these are like life scriptures for me. Ephesians is just like if you want to eat more, read Ephesians. <laughs> It's just so rich. There's just so much in Ephesians, and I love it so much. And this particular passage that we're starting with is one of my faves. So Ephesians 1, and we're going to start in verse 17. And you can read it up here also if you'd like. So I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. So is there more to know of him? Yes. He even gives us a spirit of wisdom and revelation so we can know more. That's good news. We don't even have to figure it out ourselves. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, 
but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So isn't that like so awesome and so rich and so full of really great food to eat, okay? (laughs) So can we know more of him right now? I really like it. When we like talk back and forth, so feel free. I'm really asking. Does he want us to know more of him? So then if he wants us to and there's more of him to know, then it's probably a good plan, right? So everybody good with the plan? All right, let's do it. So. I love, love, love this, that it talks about the eyes of your heart. Like, who knew your heart had eyes? I didn't until I read this. But it's so significant because there's, there's some things that he wants us to see. We see and we know. And so he gives us wisdom and revelation from himself so we can see, so we can know, and know not just with our mind, right, (laughs) but with our heart, because from our heart flows everything in life, right? With our heart, we believe. So we can see and know in from our heart so that we actually believe, like our belief system changes. The way that we think about things changes. The way that we see things changes with wisdom and revelation from him. So, whose heart eyes are these eyes that need to be enlightened? It's a real question. They're our eyes, right? They're not just like this random, oh, that really sounds nice to read. Like, no. Actually, our eyes of our heart can be enlightened. So we're going to own that right now. Can we see more? Yes. Who's going to be enlightened? Me. I am. I'm down with that plan. So... What does God want us to know? He even tells us some things in this passage that he wants us to know. He wants us to know hope. He said that you may know the hope which he has called you. So who has been called to hope? We have. This is talking to us as believers. So we've been called to hope. It's not just out there somewhere like maybe hopefully I can have some. No, actually we're called to it. He gives it to us. It's his. So we don't have to make it up, right? What else does he want us to know? The riches of his glorious inheritance. Don't you love it? Like the language that he uses even. Like it's riches, It's inheritance. It's gloryless. Like, who wants that? Okay. Who has it? Yeah, it's not something we have to, like, go, you know, digging in the ocean for and have a treasure map and work hard to really try to find it, right? Okay. What else does he want us to know? His incomparably great power. Again, listen to the language, incomparably great power. So, who has incomparably great power? Who does it say that power is for? Us who believe, right? Do you believe? Probably do. It's probably why you're here. Probably why you're online. All right, what else does he want us to know? His mighty strength he exerted when he raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly realms. So that's, you know, quite a lot of strength, right? It's quite a lot of strength. Who has access to that strength? 
That's right. I do. We do. You do. Okay, so also in light of this, like, where is Jesus? He's seated in the heavenly realms, right? He's far above all rule and authority. So guess who's on his throne? Guess who's on his throne no matter who is leading our nation in government? Guess who's leading his throne? I mean, guess who's on his throne? No matter who's leading the other nations of the world in government. No one takes, his off, takes him off his throne. No one. No president. No prime minister. No dictator. No terrorist. No one. No one takes him off his throne. Also, it says in Ephesians 3... 16 and 17. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So also, obviously, we know Jesus also lives in our hearts, right? He lives in us. He's here. He's all around us. He's in heaven. And guess what? Where are we? Same Ephesians. I'm just telling you, Ephesians, so much good food here. All right, chapter 2, verse 4. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. God raised us up with Christ, seated us with him in heavenly realms. Where are you? You're in heavenly realms. Listen, we were never meant to live with this concept that we're trying to live from earth to heaven. Like we're trying to get there. We're trying to pull things down. We're trying our best to... Figure out what's going on in heaven. No, actually, we live in heaven. We live in heaven. We live here. It's supposed to be this separation. It's not, it doesn't work in your natural mind. Like, it doesn't compute very well in our natural mind. But that's great news is because we're spiritual beings, we don't have to just understand with our natural mind. <laughs> we get to understand by the Spirit. And so we actually are meant to live from heaven to earth. So we actually get to look around heaven and see what's going on. We actually have the same rule and authority and dominion with Jesus. Right? So guess who still lives in the heavenly realms no matter who is running the government? <laughs> You, me, us, okay? So there's this whole realm that we live from, that we govern from, that we see from, that is not earthly. It's not. So it might be a good idea for us to see, right? For us to see what's going on around us in the heavenly realm. Because that's where we govern from. And we bring that to earth. We aren't down here like, oh, you know, like God, like I just don't know what's going to happen. I'm just, you know. And I mean, I'm not saying it's not a struggle. I'm not, I'm not talking about being perfect in it. I struggle all the time. I just literally have to tell the Lord, I don't even know if you're big enough for this. So you're going to have to open my eyes. Because in my natural eyes, in my natural emotions, when things don't work out the way that I want them to, and I don't see that rule, authority, and dominion the way that I want it to here, then I can get a little bit discouraged and disillusioned and disappointed, right? So, the great news is, is that we were created to not just process things in our earthly selves. 
were actually heavenly beings. And so I love it when he, when he told me one time, like, when I, when, you know, in Philippians, when it says, don't be anxious, but give thanks and prayer and the peace that passes understanding will guard your heart and mind. And the Lord was like, so guess what? You don't have to understand to have peace. That was a revelation. That was the spirit of wisdom and revelation that day for me. And just this week, he was reminding me in Proverbs, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on what? Your own understanding. And so that's where we just have to trade it. We just have to trade it in. We trade in our own understanding for his. And we just look and we see. And that's what, well, that's what we want to do. Um, that's what even we're going to do today. Yay. Okay. So the last thing about this is, from Ephesians is from Ephesians 2.10. So, because of all this riches of glorious inheritance, Ephesians 2.10 says, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So, guess what? We get to do the stuff. We get to see we get to govern from heaven. We get to do the stuff. We get to do the stuff that's going on in heaven, okay? And, and he, he said right here, like we're created to do that. We're created to do that. The stuff that's our inheritance, we get to give it away in generous, generosity, generous ways. We get to be so generous with it. Because it's so limitless. In Hebrews 10.39 says, We do not belong to those who shrink back. If there's ever a time we need to hear that, it's now, right, for us. <laughs> you know, we, in some ways, you know, we, we have had it a little bit easy in some ways with things um, in our nation. And, and it's a little bit challenging right now, right, in a lot of ways. Some what things have been going on a long time. It's just light is shining on them right now, right? But we get to be the ones that don't shrink back. We get to the, be the ones full of courage. We get to be the ones seeing what's going on in heaven, seeing what God's doing. Because guess what? It doesn't matter all the stuff that's going on. And there's stuff going on. I mean, things in Israel right now are bad. My Israeli friends, are, their messages are like, it's bad. And they're like, and don't even try to be blaming one side or the other because they're both wrong. That's coming from my Israeli Jewish friends. That's what they're saying. Just pray. Pray and see what God is doing. Because guess what? God's doing stuff in Israel with bombs going off. God is moving. Guess what? God's doing stuff in America. With all the stuff going on, God has a plan. God has assignments. God has good works. God has inheritance. We have to engage with it and not get all worn out by all the earthly stuff. The only way to do that is you have to see. You have to look. It isn't like this thing of like, well, you know, maybe God will just want to talk to me one day and maybe I'll just be able to hear him because he'll just make it happen and he'll just initiate this encounter with him. That happens all the time. But guess what? We live in heavenly realms so we get to look. We don't have to wait for anything like crazy dramatic to happen. We just get to look, right? That is really good news, you guys. <laughs> That's really good news. And so, this week in House of Prayer, please, if you are able to join at 9 a.m. on Thursday mornings, you should come in person or you should join online. If there's any way in your workplace you can just, like, have it on, like, I'm just saying, you should turn it on because it's so powerful. And so, I was prayer leader on Thursday. So, 
I've never been prayer leader for this um, set that we started before, and so I didn't really even know I was because I had a mix-up. I looked at it wrong, and I didn't think I was. So I found out just like 45 minutes before we started that I was prayer leader. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but you know what? I had Kim Church and Justin Collins, so I was like, I'm good, you know? So, but here's why I'm saying all that. It's because, like, I was not prepared. I, I was just like, okay, like, I'm, here I am, God. <laughs> and the first thing out of my mouth when I started praying, I started talking about seeing. I started saying the words, oh, we see. And it just went from there. Like, I didn't mean to. I didn't have a theme. I didn't think beforehand there was a theme. <laughs> it just happened. And by the end of it, we were in this place of seeing Jesus that I could not have made up myself. It just, that's just how the Lord took us. But then as we were praying over today... And Nikki and I are praying, and I'm like, Nikki, what do you see? And she starts talking about looking at Jesus. That's exactly what we did in House of Prayer. Nikki didn't know that because Nikki wasn't in House of Prayer this week. So we knew it was Jesus. Like, he's just setting it up. So Nikki's going to come. She's going to share some more about encountering him and seeing Jesus. And then guess what? We're going to do the stuff. Good idea, right? Absolutely. Thank you. I feel so honored that, Marcy, you asked me to help you with this sermon today since it is about looking at Jesus. I mean, what greater honor is there than that? Um, and what she's speaking about today is really the great awakening. You've heard all the, the talk of that, right? All the, all the prayers for it. It's happening on the earth. And it's not just a general random awakening. It is this awakening that she just preached on. It is the awakening to Jesus Christ himself. In Ephesians 5.14, it says, Wake from the sleep, you, you who slumber. Rise from the dead so that the light of Jesus Christ can shine upon you. This is the great awakening. It's Jesus Christ. It's not a random movement. It is happening on the earth. And we get to have a front row seat if we choose to engage. And I'm like, let's engage, right? That's good. Um, recently, the Lord said to me, many times in your life, Nikki, you've sought outcomes, but you have not sought me. And what he meant by that was the times I've prayed for healing, but I didn't look at him as the healer. And that's been a dramatic shift in my life, that if I'm praying for healing, if I'm asking him for something, I look at him as the substance and the source of it, not just what I'm asking for. It's not because it's bad to ask for healing, but the healing cost him something. When I ask for healing now from him, I look at Jesus with the eyes of my heart, according to Ephesians, and I see a ripped back. I see a back slice through to pay the price of the healing. It's, it's in that place we must be awakened to, especially us in the charismatic movement, this reawakening to the source of all things, not just the outcome, but the person of Jesus Christ himself. This is going to change everything. This is the movement on the earth. This is the great awakening. The first time I had real encounter with this personally, um, well, a, a, a deep encounter, so to speak, was early in my marriage, which was in a long time ago, because Craig and I um, have been married for almost 20 years. That's hard to, hard to believe. <laughs> it's been a good 20 years. But early in our marriage, um, I was really suffering from nighttime torment. I come from a background of a lot of brokenness, a lot of trauma, and there were just open doors to darkness that I access in my life that were um, pretty bad. And I was having horrible, horrible fear, torment at night. Like, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't calm down. It was just like such darkness. And I was praying all the prayers I could pray, y'all, like all the prayers. The blood of Jesus prayers, the rebuking the demons prayers, all the prayers you had them, I prayed them, someone would give me a prayer, I prayed the prayer. The only thing that would work, honestly, that would help me go back to sleep with just like hours of torment was every night I'd have to wake up my husband <laughs> and say, you, you pray for me. I don't know, maybe it was just my faith in his prayers, I don't know. And, you know, after a little while, I could finally go to sleep. And then I heard um, the verse in, in 1 John where it talks about, um, 1 John 4.18, right? Yes. My, yes, 4.18. Oh, good. 
that there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And something inside of me clicked in that. And I, this, the night, I was awake in the middle of the night, and I had this thought come into me, what does love look like? And immediately, with the eyes in my heart, love looked like to me like a father. And I saw Jesus as my father, and he was standing right there with me by my, by my bedside. And he was saying, I am your father, and I'm here, and I'm going to take care of you tonight. And I could see him walk around the house, checking things, coming back to check on me. And instead of praying a prayer that I prayed a million times over, I said these words out loud to testify what I was seeing with the eyes of my heart. I said, I, I have a father. I have a father who loves me. And you're taking care of me. And I'm going to be, be okay. And I could go to sleep for the first time without waking up Craig. The next night, the same thing. I'm going to look at you. I'm going to look at my father. I'm not looking for an outcome right now. I'm just looking at my father. And in looking at him, fear was gone. And I could sleep night after night until I didn't even have to do it anymore. Where I knew, I knew him. I knew him. I knew the aspect of Jesus called everlasting father that would never leave me, that would never forsake me, that would stay up with me in the watches of the night, and he would be, and everything would be okay. And it was so settled in my heart that since that time, which has been so long ago, I have prayed for countless people who are being tormented by darkness and demons. I've lost count, and in one encounter with this, which, is, which has been a beautiful privilege for me, and one time I was helping with a meeting, and this young woman came up to me, and she was like, can you pray with, pray with me? I, I really do struggle with this demonic torment stuff. And as I was praying for her, I could feel the fear. It's not like I'm immune to it emotionally. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a feeler, so I'm like praying for her. And there was a thought inside of me. It was like, what if this doesn't work? Like, I know it worked for me, Jesus, and I know I've prayed for a lot of people, and it's worked before, but what if this is the moment? And it's almost as if she... She and I were both feeling each other, and she looked at me with these wide eyes of terror. And I, I, I could feel what she's like, is there anyone who can help? And I, in that moment, I just closed my eyes. I was going to look at her eyes. I wasn't going to even look inside to see the emotions I was feeling that moment. All I could think of inside of me was, let me see Jesus. And immediately, with the eyes of my heart, he's standing right there, so big, so close, light beaming out of him. And I, he, I know what he said to me. He said, I've been waiting for this moment just for someone to ask. Let me do it. And I opened up my eyes and I looked at her this time with a smile on my face. And I said, it's going to be okay. And immediately she was delivered from that demonic torment. Not because I was some sort of radical person that was impervious to emotion, but because of seeing him. Just looking at him, his compassion that never turned anyone away, just to look at him and just to ask. In Matthew chapter 14, we see this principle whenever the winds are lashing the boat and Jesus sees his disciples from afar and he's walking out on the water toward them, right? And Peter, they're like, oh my gosh, it's a ghost. And Jesus says, no, no, it's me. It's me. You know, all good. And and um, I guess Peter didn't believe him in that moment because he was like, well, if it is you, tell me to come out, and I'll, I'll come out and walk on the water with you. So Jesus says, come. And Peter gets out, as we all know this story so well, and he's walking on the water to him until he looks at the winds and waves and begins to sink, right? And you notice in that moment where Jesus, of course, doesn't let him sink, but at that moment he says, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now, don't you think it's interesting? He didn't ask Peter, why did he doubt when Jesus just said, it's me? And then Peter questions that and says, well, if it really is you, tell me to come. The reason why Peter lost faith and had doubt was not because he asked questions, but because he took his eyes off of him. Our faith, our places of wrestling will, are all determined by where our focus is. My faith is not in the greatness of, oh, I see Jesus and I'm about to do a big thing. My faith, 
my confidence comes and I look at him. He, the author and finisher of faith, he is the one that settles doubts. So I know if I'm beginning to sink emotionally or if doubts are just tormenting my soul, it is an invitation to look. It's not an invitation for me to go into self-hatred and Nikki get it together. It's look, look. He is the one that settles it. And he is the one that's causing me to walk in the midst of winds and all these circumstances. And you notice in that Jesus himself, the son of God, is walking through the lashing of the waters. So it's not even about when we look at him, everything in our life becomes perfect. It's because in him we live and move and have our being. It's who's in charge. And in looking at him, the winds are not in charge. They do not dominate me. He is in charge. This must be settled inside of us. Jesus put it to me this way one time. He said, Nikki, don't give up in settling the places I'm asking you to settle. Because what you settle on the inside, you will settle on the outside. What you settle, you will settle. In and, and Numbers 13 and 14, when it talks about the, um, the spies going into the promised land, the land that had been talked about, the land that they had come to, at some point Joshua settled something inside of him. He settled, I don't know, it was before, during, after, but all I know in Numbers 14, when they were given the report, Joshua says, God is with us. And it was settled. It didn't matter that they were giants. It didn't matter what the circumstances were. The thing he was focused on is their protection is gone. God is with us. Let's take the land. And your awakening is not just because we're here to have a feel-good experience. It is because God so desires to heal your broken places and to begin settling the lands around you. I'm not, again, I'm not saying because there's not process. There are people that I love that are going through so many hardships. Again, I'm not denying the giants. I am denying the giant supremacy in my life. We are exalting the supremacy of Jesus Christ. I keep hearing that. Jason was prophesying into it today. That's what this is about. And whatever you're you're worshiping right now at a throne, if the throne is the name of the President of the United States, that is an inferior throne. There is a throne above all thrones. There is a name above all names. And in his presence, as we look at him, everything else must bow, period. This is not up for debate anymore. What is up for debate is the choice to engage and to look. He settled it 2,000 years ago, and he's standing before us today and saying, settle it. Look at me. Look at me. The circling stops. The sinking stops. As we look at the man Jesus Christ. And I believe in every circumstance that you face, we're probably about to go into encounter, honey. So, so, whatever that means, yes, I've never done this before, I figure if we look like this, it looks like I know what I'm doing, okay, <laughs> in the names of Jesus Christ, you know, he started with I am, and thankfully, because he's so willing to help us, he's got a lot of names, Emmanuel, God with us, Prince of Peace, Peace is not passive. He is the ruler. He is the king of peace who is bringing it into every place of chaos. He is the everlasting father. He is counselor. He is mighty God. He is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. And in this place right now, there is a name in him. There is an aspect of him that he wants you to see and encounter today. Because it is that name that will rule over all other names in your life. It was the everlasting father who came that I encountered that rules and still rules over my night times. He's never left. I woke up this morning. He was sitting right there next to me. I'm not kidding. With the eyes of my heart, I was like, thank you, father. Hmm. Yeah, so we're just going to just go into a time right now where we're just going to look at him. 
There's just an invitation to look at him, to see him. Wherever you are, whatever's going on, whether you have a, a lot of needs that you know of where you need to see him in or whether you don't, we're, we're going to look at him because always, always, always when we look at him, we know more of him. We see more of him. We engage with more of him. And there's always more of him. And, and we all feel so, so strongly that in this time and season, for such a time as this, Convergence Church is a place and a people who encounter him and make a way for others to encounter him as well. And I feel like even right now, even what's happening right now, it's even bigger than us in this room. It's bigger even than whoever's on live stream. Like God is doing something in the spirit right now. God is doing something that is creating this place of encounter. Here, right here in this building, I believe this building this building was built to be a place of encounter. And as much as I know that God is never limited to buildings, I do believe he creates places and spaces for people to come and encounter him. And I believe this place is one of those places. I believe we need to be inviting people here like never before because people need to see him. And as we see him, we go out from this place and we become a place for others to see him wherever we are. So right now, just however is comfortable for you, if you want to stand, if you want to sit, if you want to kneel, if you want to lay down, if you want to come up to the front, sometimes that just helps me focus. We're just going to spend some time focusing right now. We're just going to spend some time looking at him. And so I do think we'll start with turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his mind. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. So yeah. turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for right now we just see you Jesus we see you Jesus we see that the veil has been removed we see you face to face we see that there's nothing stopping us there's nothing keeping us from seeing you face to face right now we look at you Jesus we see your face we see that we are seated with you in heavenly realms we see we see the heavenly realms. We see, we look, we see that you are not far off. We see you, Jesus, we see. We see that you are comfort. We see that you are healing. We see that you are grace that you help in our time of need. That you, you didn't say, try harder because we have a need. 
you said to come to the throne of grace where we live. We live right there. We see Jesus. We see that we live right there with you at your throne of grace. It's right there. It's right there. And you have grace that helps in time of need. Your grace is not a natural thing. It's supernatural. By grace you were saved, not of yourselves. That same grace is there for our time of need. We see that, Jesus. We see that grace. We see that grace and we take it right now. We take it right now. We step into it right now. We see you, Jesus. We see that your strength. We see that your strength. It, it, it's not. It doesn't even matter about our strength because you are strength. It's who you are, Jesus. We see you. We see you. We see you in those places where we feel weak. We see you there, Jesus. We see you right there, Jesus. Right there, those places of confusion. We see you right there, Jesus. We see you right there. We see that you're not afraid of it. You're not afraid of confusion. You're not afraid of pain. You're not afraid of sickness. You're not afraid of fear. We see you right there, Jesus. We see you right there in the middle of fear. We see you there, Jesus. We see you there. We see you there in the bitterness. That not even bitterness separates us from you. Because you said there was nothing that could separate us from your love, Jesus. Nothing. Not any created thing. We see you there. We see you right there. In those bitter places, we see you right there in the questions. We see you right there. We see you right there in our doubts. We see you there, Jesus. We see you there, Jesus, in our anxieties. We see you there. We see you there in those places where we don't know how it's going to work out. But we know who is with us. We see you, Jesus. We look at you, Jesus. We see you there, Jesus. We see you there on your throne. We see you there on your throne. No matter what's going on in the world, you're on your throne. No one takes you off your throne. We see you there, Jesus. We see you there. We see you there with the river of life that never runs dry. And the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. And we see it. We see it there, Jesus. We see it there. We see you right there. That the river flows from your very throne. We see you there, Jesus. him oh there's new worship that's rising up in your heart and it's okay right now places where you realize I've been worshiping at other altars I've even worshiping at the, the giant altars thankfully Jesus the mediator is here interceding for you as you look at him and you can just feel that so just let it wash away let wash away the regret let wash away the condemnation his blood and his cross paid for that too. And now with singular focus within the eyes of your heart, as you look at him, let's worship. I see it. I see us before the throne of the Lamb. And he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was who is and who is to come. He's come in your life before. He's coming today. And the things that are on your heart matter to him. And he promised. 
promised us, I will come again. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. Say it with me. People of God gathered around the throne of the Lamb. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. He's not done yet. He's not done yet. it's okay it's okay if you're tired it's okay because I'm not tired I don't ever get tired it's okay if you're tired it's okay if you're weary it's okay because I don't ever get weary it's okay if you're weak because I am never weak I am strong and I am your strength Look at me. It's okay. It's okay if you're afraid because I'm love. It's okay. It's okay if you have pain because I am healer. I am with you. I just see you. I see you, Jesus. I see you there on the road with us with your arm around our shoulder. We just see you there, Jesus. We see you there. We see you on the road with us. Our eyes are open. We're not alone on the road. We're not alone on the road. I see you there, Jesus. We see you there, Jesus. We're not alone in our home. We're not alone in our car. We're not alone at work. We're not alone at school. We're not alone in our trouble. We're not alone. We see you there, Jesus. I see you there. I see you there in the car. I see you there in the kitchen. I see you there in the living room. I see you there. I see you there, Jesus. I see you there at work. I see you. I see you there, Jesus. Are love, Jesus. You are love. See you there. See you there. I see you there as love, Jesus. I see you there, Jesus, in those questions we've been afraid to ask. Eyes really have been open. There's just 
distinct encounters and testimonies right now. Brand new, fresh manna for today. Hallelujah. And I see this coming week, you're going to be, as you see him more and more, remember, acknowledge it. Just as I did, you know, I looked at him as father and I just said, I have a father. You're my father. You're watching over me. Open your mouth to begin acknowledging it. It will increase as you begin recognizing out loud to him and worship him in that place. There's also going to be distinct breakthroughs this week. And remember, it wasn't because we prayed a better prayer. It wasn't because we did a better job. It's because of the goodness of Jesus and knowing him and him knowing us. And the reason why this is important is it continues to increase the fragrant worship of our lives before him. So when you have those moments today and tomorrow in the coming days, say it out loud. Don't let the moment pass you by to look in his eyes and say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You're so faithful. You're so good. You're so true. Thank you, Jesus. It multiplies. It just, it, it, it creates that momentum where it just multiplies. Like the lepers coming back to Jesus say thank you. They not only, the ones who came back to say thank you, not only were healed, but Jesus gave them even more. So we engage with you fully right now and in these coming moments. Because I'm telling you, it's, it's happening. I really want to encourage us this morning that the scripture Marcy read from Ephesians, we didn't come here to just receive a revelation. We came here to enter into a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And a revelation is a moment, which we've had some moments, but you're not just in a moment, you're, in a, you're living in a river of revelation. That's what a spirit is like you're living in the river of revelation so revelation you live in it now for the rest of your life there are marker moments along the river but you're living in revelation so you're going to have revelation as you leave here today you're going to have revelation on monday tuesday you live in revelation now for the rest of eternity because jesus placed you there it's not based on your performance it's based on the performance of Jesus who took you out of sin, made you righteous, and placed you in a place of revelation where you see and you live in that place. So, Father, thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation over each one of us. And I declare that you live in a, in a river of revelation that your eyes are open to see from now and for all eternity. Yeah, yeah, so... The there's no easy way to <laughs> transition from this place. But as you go ev throughout, it's not just for this place. It's every day, all week long. Just look at him. I just see, I just see people like even like setting an extra place at the dinner table for Jesus. Like looking as you walk, that he's walking next to you that he's sitting next to you in the car and you're just looking at him, you're just talking to him, just looking at him, whatever you're doing, whatever's going on, you just look at him. It's because all we have to do is look and we'll see. So thank you, Jesus, that we live in that spirit of wisdom and revelation that is a continual invitation to see. And we receive it. Go look and see.